I want you to write this down. I want to talk for just a few minutes about don't doubt in the dark what God has told you in the light. This may surprise you, but a word from God does not eliminate the dark every time. All of us pass through times of difficulty, times of challenge, and times of darkness. If you doubt that, consider for a moment the great heroes of the Bible, Abraham. I'm going to just put it on the board. I probably won't read it, but you can make a note of it. God spoke to Abraham. Change my mind. I think I will read this part. Genesis chapter 12, one of the great heroes of the Bible, the father of the faithful. We're called the children of Abraham. Look at this in Genesis 12. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Underline the Lord had said, this was God's word to Abraham. And from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. Watch this promise. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. How many of you like that part? Well, we're taking a vote here. <laughs> always, always heard that Baptists like to vote, don't they? How many of you like the blessed part? I will bless thee. I will bless thee and make thine name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. How many of you would say that is a great, great word to hear from God? Amen. Have you studied at all Abraham's life? After this promise, 25 years went by. Abraham and Sarah at that point were approaching 100 years old and there was no signal that she was going to bear a child. That had to be a difficult time. But Abraham understood that God moves for us. Some of the greatest miracles in the Bible took place during dark times. Abraham was able to understand that God was with him even in the dark times. You go to the New Testament and you pick up this verse. Look at this. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. Paul wrote of this particular story. As it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Look at this, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. I love the next verse. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. I could go on and on. The greatest king that Israel ever had, King David, chosen by God, anointed by God, anointed as the king. But not long after the tremendous promises spoken over him by the prophet, we find David dealing with jealousy from his own family, from his own brothers, we find that Saul, King Saul, his predecessor, tried to kill him several times. David became a fugitive and had to live in caves in the mountains for a period of time. I want to back up and say it. Just because God has said it doesn't mean that all the darkness is removed from our lives. He walked through the darkness of moral failure. How many of you remember that? That he, the tragic story of his affair, having Bathsheba's husband Uriah slain in battle. That had to be a dark moment when the prophet came to him and told him what, it, what was going to happen. It was on that occasion that David wrote Psalm 51. 
It's interesting. In spite of his moral failure, and that was a tragedy, that was a heartbreaker. It was his, the darkest moment in his life. But in spite of his moral failures, he was able to still fulfill his God-given destiny. How many of you are glad that according to God's word, just because you fail, that doesn't make you a failure, that the Bible is a book of successful failures because of the grace of God? Amen. No wonder Brother Mike preaches so good here. There's a wonderful grace of God. Turn to David and say, I know that the folks of those little things are going to tell Amen. In fact, <laughs> David wrote Psalm 51 in this dark moment. You need to look at it. Holy Spirit speaking to my heart. Somebody in this room right now needs to hear right what I'm saying. The devil has been beating you up because you have a failure or failures in your life. I want you to know. God is not here to condemn you or to judge you or to put you down. He is here, here to lift you up and put you back on the right road to fulfill your God-given destiny. Amen. Listen to what David wrote, Psalm 51 2. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. What did God respond with? Condemnation and judgment? No. God responded with forgiveness. Don't doubt in the dark what God has said to you in the light because it's still good though you're walking through a dark time in your life. In fact, I want you to go to a, a psalm that is my favorite. I committed it to memory. Hard to say this over 60 years ago, dear mercy, but I did. But I was reading this particular psalm just a few weeks ago, and I can quote it. I can quote it word for word, but I saw something in this psalm, Psalm 23, that I had never seen before. Say, Pastor Holman, how could that be? I don't know. Maybe while I was sleeping, the Holy Spirit wrote it there, and I just saw it like that. No, that didn't happen. It was there because the Bible is a living book, and the Holy Spirit can take a verse that you've read a hundred times, and suddenly, might you jump off the page. Anybody here ever read that? Oh, yes. The Lord is my shepherd. I love it. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The next verse is the fourth verse. You know what it says? Yea, though I walk. What's the next word? I, I couldn't hear you. What was that word? Yea, though I walk through. You know what? You know what the word through means? You know what the word through means? It means through. <laughs> it means you're not going to die there. It means you're not going to spend the rest of your life there. It means you're not going to camp out there. It means you are going to make it in truth. Amen. I thought about you were going to This is the truth. Hey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, that can be quoted in the funeral, but that verse just has a much broader application than just when a person dies physically. How would you know we walk through the valley of the shadow while we're still living on this earth from time to time? 
to make sure I know who I'm talking to today. Anybody here, since you became a Christian, you've walked through at least one valley? We're taking a vote again. The rest of you have never had any valleys. You pray for us, sir, would you? We <laughs> quote that again. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I want you to turn to your neighbor, look him right in the eye. Say, huh? You're going to make it through. <laughs> You're going to make it through. God sent me here today. I actually live now in Fort Smith. We, uh, we lived here 44 years and then we moved away to Gulf Shores for seven years and we can move back. We just couldn't stay away from y'all. <laughs> and it's not so, one of the reasons I'm speaking for you today is because my air fare is the cheapest of any speaker that has come by. We live 10 minutes from here. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley, God sent me here to tell you today, get your chin off of your chest, put a smile on your face, because you are going to make it through. Amen. You believe that? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Watch this. I will fear no evil. Fear is not to be a part of your valley experience. Don't be afraid of your valley. Don't let the devil fill your heart with fear, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound. I told you, you don't know what's going on in the world over here. Oh, yes, I do. But I want to tell you something. In spite of what's going on in the world, we as believers can live without fear because we are going through it. <laughs> Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art one <laughs> God spoke to me and he said, you need to tell the people that I'm not just going to deliver them. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be with them all the way through the Bible. And for that reason, you know what I have to do? Because God is with you even in the Bible. And I heard that. Amen. <laughs> I asked the lady who was sitting behind me right over here a while ago because I'd forgotten. I said, what time do y'all get out? <laughs> she told me 1110. <laughs> <laughs> no, she now, God Himself is with me in dark times. He is with you. Not only can He heal your sickness, He'll be with you while you're in your sickness. He is with you when the job opportunity doesn't come through. He is with you when you receive bad news. He's with you in the chemo ward. He's with you when you fail. I've talked about it. He's with you when your spouse walks out on you. That's a dark time. He is with you in the storm, in the wind. He's with you in the dark. He not only delivers you from the fiery furnace, he is with you in the furnace. Remember the king? 
Three Hebrews wouldn't bow, had him thrown in the furnace, heated seven times hotter. And the king called his, his, his soldiers around him and said, excuse me, how many did we throw in there? They said, three, O oh, king. He said, not three of you now. I see four. And the fourth is like the Son of God. Let me encourage you today. God is with you. Carol and I, Carol and I came to Fort Smith in 1971. Uh, I was young, 27 years old. And God clearly spoke to us. We'd never been to Fort Smith. We didn't know anybody in Fort Smith. We had no family in Fort Smith. God told us to move to Fort Smith. I'll be honest with you, I did not like Fort Smith. <laughs> I came here to preach to a little small group of people, about 20, 25 people. And I remember the last day I was to be with them was Carolina Wood, it was on a Sunday, and uh, Sunday night was the last time. And I was praying for the service. And as I was praying, I, I began to pray compassionately. I said, Lord, these people really need somebody to come and lead them. They desperately need a pastor. And I actually prayed this, don't ever pray this way. I said, Lord, I just want to thank you that it's not me. I'm leaving in the morning. <laughs> I mean, look, people here five days, it rains, sleep, snow, and we have a flood in five days. I preached one time with my feet was so good because I got out of the car in the parking lot at one day and water ran over the tops of my shoes. I said, Lord, I'm glad I'm getting out of here. How many of you know God has a sense of humor? He spoke to me as clearly as I was talking to you and he said, I want you to cancel all of your engagements, all of your meetings that you have scheduled, and I want you to bring your wife and baby. I want you to move to Fort Smith and I want you to plant a church. I tell you what went through my mind. I've been eating too much pizza. <laughs> that can't be God. I said, now my wife, when I go in and tell her this, because she was staying in the little house next door. I said, when I tell her this, she's going to look at me and say, you have totally lost your mind. There's no way we need to move to Fort Smith, Arkansas. That's what I thought she would say. I won't go to her that. I will never forget this. She said, that's what God told you to do. That's what we need to do. Amen. I said to myself, I didn't tell her this. You may be too much pizza. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we moved. The first Sunday we were here, we had 27 people. That's a good start. The second Sunday we were here, 20 of them quit. <laughs> you need to read my book on how they ended the church in one easy Sunday. <laughs> They were the money folks. They said, if you'll come, we'll take care of you financially till the church can, can support you. Money walked out the door. It got so bad, they turned electricity off. We couldn't even pay the electric bill. How many of you know that sounds a little bit like a valley right there? Huh? Here I am in a place I don't know anybody. Everybody's walked out, and we got seven people. <laughs> I canceled every meeting I had except that one in Memphis and the guy wouldn't let me cancel. He said, you've already been announced, you got to come. I said, all right. I went to Memphis and preached that meeting. I prayed for the rapture every day. <laughs> <laughs> On the way to the airport, they sent me a ticket and Carol, I didn't even want to drive. I mean, I, I was just crushed. None of you have ever been that way. In, 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 any husbands and wives here, you've ever had a silent ride? <laughs> If you mind the problem, I mean, you don't say anything. We weren't saying a word. I mean, nothing. Silence. This is the way the silence was broken. My wife turned to me. She's driving. She turned to me and she said, God spoke to me last night. That's all she said. Women love to do this. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I said, what did he say? <laughs> she said, he told me to ask you a question. <laughs> What's the question? She said, he told me to ask you 
What is the first thing you do when you get ready to build a new building? My dad has built a little round construction all my life. First thing went through my mind, my wife has gone totally crazy. We got seven people and she's wanting to start a building program. We don't need a building, we need a congregation. I said, what did you say? She said, the Lord told me to ask you, what is the first thing you do when you get ready to build a new building? I said, that's really simple. You clear the site. When that came out of my mouth, something happened in my heart. Then she turned to me. She's a good woman. She's a godly woman. She turned to me driving with one hand, pointing her finger at me. And she shook this finger and she said, God spoke to me to tell you that if you will be faithful, he'll raise up one of the largest churches ever built in this river valley. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, folks, we have seven people. <laughs> Do you know what God spoke to my heart? He was with us in the valley. He was with us in the dark. There was some dark times. I mean, the last thing you need is trying to have church without electricity. Because you can't pay the electric bill. But how many of you know God is faithful even in the valley? Yes. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Though I walk through the valley, thou art with me. I want to challenge you with this closing word. <laughs> Used up my three and a half minutes, haven't I? I want to challenge you right now with the words of an old chorus. Haven't heard this in years, but in prayer this came to me. Anybody here ever heard the song? Reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. How many of you have ever heard that? You'll find he's not too busy to hear your <coughs> heart's cries. He's had since by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out. How's your statement I sound just a lot, don't you think? <laughs> All you scouts from Nashville, I'll talk to you after service. <laughs> Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Can I close my message with this? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes, all across the screen. It would be great if we could get the thank you, thank you very much. Such a wonderful lady, very sensitive there. Thank you. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, nobody's looking around and we're waiting for just a moment in God's presence. I want to ask you a question. It's a pretty direct question right there. How many of you will say to me, Pastor Holden, honest with you, I'm passing through a valley right now, and I need God to help me. I need to be able to reach out to Jesus right now, right where I am, whatever my valley may be. I need God to help me in this valley. With nobody will come on this. I'd like to see the hand of every man, woman, student, whoever you are. Just lift it up. You're not joining anything. I'd just like to pray for you right now. Pastor, I'm in a valley and I need, I need God to help me right now. In my valley. God bless, God bless you. 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 Over to my left in this section, in the Cascade area. Put your hand up as I say, Pastor, that, that's me. That's me. Please, please include me in your prayer right now. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless you. You may put them down. Thank you. I would never embarrass you for nothing in this world, but I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but I am going to ask you right where you're sitting, right where you're sitting, right now, if you lifted your hand, and even if you did lift your hand, and you'd like to be included in this prayer, I'm going to ask you to just gently stand where you are. All of you who lifted your hands, and even if you did raise your hand, I want you to stand up right now and say, include me, Pastor Holden, in your prayer. Stand up for me right now. If you lifted your hand, God bless you. 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 All across this room, God bless you. 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 I'm asking you to stand because I want you to reach out and take a hold of. Don't doubt in the dark what God has told you in the light. I want to pray for you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for every man, woman, and student that is on their feet in this auditorium. In the name of Jesus, come to them in this moment of prayer with your presence and with your peace and with your assurance that, Lord God, you are with them right where they are, right here today. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. I thank you for it, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name. Just remain standing for just a moment. Are there those of you in this room? Please, nobody looking around. I felt the Holy Spirit spoke to me that I needed to ask this. How many of you would say, Pastor, I have had a big failure in my life, but I need God to restore to me. And I want to take his hand as he helps me to get back on track for my life. Put your hand up if that's you right now. God bless you. 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 Father God, you see the hands that have been lifted. I pray right now, Lord, that at this very moment, they may reach out and take you by the hand and allow you to lead them back into the path that you have ordained for their life to be. Let them never, never, never accept the lie that because they failed, they're a failure. That's not true. Lord, you today want to restore them by your grace and by your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Pastor, thank you so very much.